Hi guys. So today's video is going to be both a book review and a book chat for The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. The book review portion of this video is going to be first and then once I get to a certain point I'll put a little stamp up here, a little timestamp to let you know when the chat part starts so if you just want to skip to that you can. Because I am combining the book chat and review for this one I'm going to keep the book review portion of this video a little shorter than my normal book reviews but I still want to give you guys as much information as possible to give you an idea if this sounds like something you'd be interested in. So getting right into it, the plot of the story is one that is a little hard to pinpoint because in typical kind of epic fantasy fashion, it is a multiple point of view story and every individual character has sort of different things going on. We're with this group of friends, they're going to this school for people who are known as gifted. We get some information that there was a war that took place right before this current generation of individuals and in this war there were people that were called augurs and augurs are essentially wiped out now. They were individuals that had magical abilities kind of like the gifted but the augurs are basically gone, the gifted are still around but they're somewhat mistreated and their abilities have huge restrictions because of something called the tenets. So gifted, even though they have these awesome powers, the tenets are so restrictive that they really can't do much with them. When we're first introduced to the main character of the story, we have Asha, we have Weir, and then we have Davian, and they are all going to a school that trains gifted, and Davian, unlike his friends, is having a really, really hard time being able to control his powers, and if he's not able to control his powers by a certain point, then he will become what's known as a shadow, which is somebody who used to be a gifted, but then their powers were taken away completely. Davian finds out that part of the reason he might not be able to control his powers is because he might actually not just be a gifted, he might actually be an auger, one of the people that was wiped out before his time, and then he's kind of recognizing that he might have to do something to make sure that he is not attacked or persecuted for this ability. He has nothing to lose, either he has all of his powers taken away and becomes a shadow, or he fulfills this quest that this person presents to him and possibly is able to find out a little bit more about himself, be able to help the augurs, and kind of make the world a better place. That is of course a huge generalization of the plot, but there are a lot of things that tie into the plot because there are multiple characters. We get introduced to a few more characters, we start to discover that the plot might be darker than we originally thought, that maybe there are people behind the scenes that are trying to fill their own agendas. And then there is also this terrible enemy known as Devade who may or may not be coming back and ultimately our characters might have to face that at some point. I would say this is very much a quest story. A lot of our main characters end up traveling and embarking on a quest. So if you guys are fans of traveling questing type stories, you will probably really, really, really love this. If you don't love those kinds of stories, I mean, maybe check the book out if it still sounds interesting to you. Just know going in that it's going to have that. And also, I would say this book is more plot driven than character driven. If you love a good plot, you will probably also really love this. But if you are the kind of person that loves to really get to know the characters, everybody has really distinct personalities and a lot of reflection and things like that. There's not necessarily a ton of that in this book. Also the writing style of this book is very direct. It's very simple. It's not dense whatsoever. I will say that there are a lot of names and places and terms that are that are specific to this fantastical world and that can be maybe a little bit difficult but as far as the writing itself it's it's very straightforward. All that said, I do want to jump into the book chat portion of this video now, so if you haven't read it, you probably don't want to watch past this point because there's probably going to be some spoilers. Alrighty, so for all of you who have read the book, I when I picked it up, I was told by some people that the book starts off very hunky-dory and seems like, oh, we're going to go out on this quest and like take this box to this one person or whatever and then that it gets really dark and it gets more serious and I was like oh okay okay and I was definitely seeing that when the book first started and then everybody at the school gets killed and Asha wakes up and is like wow everybody's dead and I was like oh dang all right here we go so I was definitely intrigued early on I was very curious to see this kind of silent in the background enemy that we don't know about quite yet and the fact that the person Tenvar that was supposedly helping helping Davian might not be somebody we can actually trust. Kind of taking a huge jump, I did also not expect Caden to actually be Devade. Like would I I mean maybe some of you guys guessed that. I don't know. I just I wasn't expecting I was really rooting for Caden. I liked Caden. Those things really stood out to me, but 
There were a lot of other things about the book that I, I don't know that I love. First, I really, really do think that this book is more plot driven than character driven. And I know for me personally, I adore character driven books and, and I, I like a good plot. I think it's great if you can have a mix of both. But in this one, I felt like we were missing some character development. It seemed like almost all character development essentially happened through through dialogue and through interactions, but it didn't feel like a lot of character development came through self-reflection. So whenever we were with Weir or we were with Ash or we were with Davian, we definitely were getting all the scenes through their eyes, but I never really felt like I was feeling what they were feeling in those situations. It definitely felt like if I had taken Davian and put Davian in Caden's shoes, or if I took Asha and I put Asha in Weir's shoes, it just kind of felt like the whole situation would have played out exactly the same. And I, for me, I always want a situation to feel like the only reason that that situation is playing out the way it's playing out is because it's those characters in that scene. So if if I were to put Davian in Caden's shoes, if if I feel like Davian would have done the exact same thing or if I feel like the scene would have played out exactly the same, to me that means that the story is much more plot driven and less character driven. And the plot was definitely cool and it was definitely a really interesting story. And that ending, man, that ending. I am very curious <laughs> about what happens next, but I don't know that I like really really care for a lot of the characters like I, I mean I sort of care about them as I'm reading it but then when I set it down there aren't things there aren't lasting things about their personalities that really that really connect me to them I think one example of this would be when all, Weir and Asha and Davian they find out at some point that everybody at the school died and I feel like every single one of them was like oh and then they were sad and that was kind of it. I don't know, if I found out that every single person that I knew was dead, I feel like that would be weighing on me a lot. Like I would be trying to push past it, and maybe it would have maybe it would have felt different to me if some of the characters were trying to push past it, but then certain other characters just couldn't get over it. That to me would have showed different personality types, but every single one of them was able to kind of bottle that in and keep it in check and then just go about their daily business. And then if somebody mentioned the school, then it felt like Oh yeah, like then it's it's like hard for them to hear about the school, but is it that hard? I mean, they always get over it pretty quick. The writing style too, I mentioned this in the regular book review portion of this. It's very direct, it's really easy to get into. And I actually really, really do appreciate when a writing style is direct in a book that is so fantastical because I'm already trying to remember all these new things and kind of get used to the magic and figure out all these places. And then on top of that, if I'm trying to figure out what the sentence just meant because it's, because it's so flowery, that kind of annoys me. So I did really appreciate that the writing style was fairly simplistic, but one thing I will say is I think the editor could have definitely trimmed a good amount. For example, there was a lot of times with dialogue that it was already established who was talking because it would give you some kind of physical thing that the character was doing right before they'd speak. So maybe it would be like, Davian sighed or something and then it would say whatever Davian was saying and then it would be he said quietly or something and it's like and it's kind of like I don't I don't need that extra dialogue tag I already know it's Davian talking because this paragraph starts with some kind of physical indication that it's Davian or some kind of description of Davian along those same lines there would also be times when a character was speaking and they'd been speaking for a while there was a few sentences in their paragraph of dialogue and then it would give me the dialogue tag these are obviously really really tiny things but I'm bringing them up because it's a it's something that pulls me out of the story there were also just a few times that certain terms or certain words or descriptions would be used often enough that I not only noticed it, but some of you in the various buddy reads, because this was the buddy read for August, some of you guys picked up on it. So if multiple people are picking up on, on some of the same terms being used maybe a little too often, again, I think that's something an editor should have noted. For example, for a lot of the first chunk of the book, when characters are meeting new characters who are around the same age as them, they are always described as they were around Asha's age, or they looked to be about Davian's age. It was never, they looked fairly young, or they looked like they might be this, like it was never varied. It was just always, if they were young-ish, they were about Davian's age. People were often also in companionable silence. That term was used 
a lot to the point where I started to kind of chuckle and I told my husband, I was saying to him like, oh, everybody's always in companionable silence. And then I went to pick it up and I was reading it a few days later and I just nudged him and I just like showed him a page because sure enough, after picking it up, just like a couple minutes in, companionable silence was written. There was also another time where the word gaped, like oh, that kind of thing was written twice on one page, and then I think either the very next page, or if you flipped the page, the word gaped was used again. I will say though, I do think that these, these kinds of things got way better as the story went. Also, speaking of the story, I definitely felt that the story itself was really, really cool, and I was really intrigued by a lot of the different things that were going on, and I think that the book is probably better off read quickly. Since I picked this to be the monthly buddy read, I read it over the course of the month instead of reading it maybe within a few days or within a week. And I think that that was a disservice to this book because there are so many terms that are specific to this story and there are a lot of different places and there's a lot of things going on. There's a lot of characters introduced and they don't recap those things and there's nothing in the back to remind you in case you're like who's this again you can't really go to the back and check and i think that i think if i had read the book in a week's time instead of a month's time that a lot of that would have been patched up i'll admit there were quite a few times when characters would be reunited and they're like what happened what all has been going on with you and then i'm like oh good like they're gonna give a refresher because i could probably use one too and then and then there'd be sentences that'd be like they relayed everything that had happened to them and i was like dang it i do want to mention a few specific scenes in the story first off why was asha left alive like i'm still really curious about that it kind of tells you at the end that she was left alive on purpose and i don't know why that sword fighter guy elric I wasn't a fan of that guy for so long. He was just such a butthole, and I was so excited when Caden kind of finally put him in his place. Finding out that Elosian was being controlled, I didn't see that coming. I I was just kind of thinking like, oh, he changed his mind because it turns out his son was a gifted and stuff. And so I didn't really, I mean, they and Islington definitely hinted at, oh, it used to be him that had this more negative rhetoric toward gifted. And so he, I mean, he was basically letting you know. Asha was by far, I think, the character whose storyline I always found the most interesting, weirdly enough. I love political stuff, and I definitely think there was more going on in that sense with her, where with Davian and them, it was them getting from one place to the next, and then, oh no, we're in danger, and then getting out of it, and then one place to the next. So I really liked Asha's plotline. I was so confused when Davian showed up, and he was older, and he's just like in her room, and it was at that time when he was he was in that place and so I was like is he somehow communicating with her right now like is he aware that he's doing this is he doing this and I'm gonna go to his scene and it's gonna be like yeah I was talking to Asha or something and then and then it wasn't like that at all like Davian clearly doesn't have any idea about that so what the heck was going on I also want to say I I actually think Islington anytime he did any kind of flashback or he did any kind of so, some kind of short story type this type thing in this in this book it always to me was really good in particular the one with mal shesh is that how you say his name oh shoot the one with him and his wife being killed and then him going around and killing everybody trying to use their essence to bring her back to life that i mean islington maybe should write some short stories or something because that that whole story i was like oh like, i really liked it i also really loved the lore element when davian is reading that book toward the end and it's that story about the guy with the three quests, the one to find a friend, the one to find a subject, and the one to find the love of his life. I really liked that story too. And I think I felt more connected to the characters in those situations and in those particular scenes than I did sometimes with our main characters, which is why as much of as much as it sounds like a big such a brat when it comes to the dialogue tags and those kinds of things, it bugs me because if we had trimmed a lot of that stuff and then we could have gotten so much more reflection and so much more connection to the characters and not just their expressions, but really what they thought about what was going on or what they thought about what had happened, if we had gotten so much more of that, then I feel like I would have been so much more connected to them like I was whenever we had a short amount of time to be connected to somebody. Let me know what your thoughts were on it. Let me know if you really, really loved it, if you thought similar things to me. I hope you guys loved it. Happy reading to all of you, and I'll see you later. Bye.